Hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to give a walkthrough of some JBrowse 2 functionality and show how we connected it to the hackathon project with SV Explorer. This is a re-recording of the Zoom call I gave, um, but hopefully it captures the same amount of content. So the background, or what problems does JBrowse 2 try to solve? So genome browsers generally only show a single chromosome at a time for a single organism. But we may want to compare multiple different species or compare a draft genome assembly to the reference genome. We may also want to show a whole genome overview, so multiple chromosomes at a time, or show discontinuous regions from multiple chromosomes, say, uh, gene fusion or chromosomal fusion. So to solve some of these problems, we developed JBrowse 2. And I'm just going to show how JBrowse 2 can be used to explore some different types of structural variants. So this screenshot just shows um, basically exploring a deletion from a trio data set with a mother, a father, and a child. and in this case, there's a homozygous deletion where there's a total lack of coverage in these two samples, but just a drop in coverage from the other sample. And kind of interestingly, you can see these blue markers would show uh, uh, excess of soft clipping. Uh, the purple shows an excess of insertion. We also can explore insertions in detail, um, and these are PacBio HiFi reads from the Genome in a Bottle project. And this has a approximately 1600 base pair insertion. And one interesting feature we have is you can right click one of these reads and it will pop open a read versus reference view. So the read sequence is here on the bottom and the reference genome is on the top. And this yellow triangle shows the extra bases that are on that read. And you can actually click and drag to select that sequence and run it against BLAST. And in this case, it comes up with a unique insertion sequence. Um, but maybe in your data set, it would come up with a transposon sequence or something else of interest. We also have a sort of workflow built into JBrowse 2 that we call the SV Inspector. So this allows you to load up um, all your variants in a spreadsheet type table. And um, it also shows dynamically synchronized with the table, this whole genome overview in a circular view. And you can click on the different chords of this circular view to pop open uh, the evidence for that structural variant. So this shows these black curvy lines uh, giving the read evidence for chromosome 1 and chromosome 5 being fused here. Uh, the reads, long reads, are split aligned to both chromosomes. We can also view things like inversions. Um, this is again using uh, short read paired end reads and if you uh, open up this arc view in jbrowse2 it will color the paired end reads according to whether they're uh, discordant or normally paired so discordant pairs are pointed in the same direction um, and normally paired end reads are pointed at each other and uh, depending on that orientation it's green or blue and when you have them overlapping like this, that is a solid indication for an inversion. You can also see things like a whole genome overview to look at C and Bs. Um, this case, it's tumor versus normal whole genome sequencing data, uh, nanopore reads, uh, that we calculated the coverage with most depth created bigwig files, and loaded this into JBrowse. 
and uh, you can see that we have the normal tissue in red giving a relatively flat coverage profile and the, the tumor reads their coverage is colored blue and it has all these amplifications and deletions that are characteristic of the structurally disrupted tumor genome. There's other miscellaneous features. We, had, we can view Hi-C data using the .hi-C file format from Juicebox. Um, Hi-C can often be used for visualizing structural variants and uh, or, or checking genome assemblies too. Um, and also this sort of multi-bigwig example from ENCODE data. So this is a bunch of ChIP-seq tracks that are all stacked up and synchronized to the same Y scale using this multi-bigwig track type. So now uh, we're going to look at some of the Synteny features and I'm going to tailor this to uh, our SB hackathon and some crazy experiments that I did. So the context of this is the HG002 T to T project. And this is interesting because it's a complete phased diploid assembly. So it has a full copy of the maternal genome and the paternal genome in a single FASTA file. What I did was I split the FASTA file up into its maternal and paternal components and then align them together with Minimap2 to view in JBrowse. And with this loaded into JBrowse, we can look at the so-called synteny of the maternal versus the paternal genome. Um, in this case, we're focusing on chromosome 22. And uh, one thing that's just interesting is the maternal chromosome 22 is a full four mega base pairs larger than the paternal copy. And that's probably largely due to this hourglass shaped locus in the centromere. Um, the blue is just showing the coverage of the same read data set that was aligned to uh, both copies. This is continuing in the uh, maternal versus paternal investigation. Uh, there's a large, large-ish inversion uh, between these two genomes, the maternal on top, the paternal on the bottom. And again, this blue and green paired end read pattern gives us evidence for the inversion. There's also uh, the ability to investigate even small types of variants. Um, the, again, I said I used Minimap2 to align the maternal versus the paternal assembly, and I outputted the cigar string, and this allows us to get per base information about that whole genome alignment. And in this case, uh, we can see there's about a 50 BP insertion uh, on the paternal genome compared to the maternal genome. And when you align reads here, there are a, an excess number of reads piled up here, even though they have a weird clipping pattern, which I have yet to investigate. Now this brings us to our SV Explorer product. So I wanted to have sort of a lightweight tool to load the VCF files from all of the different structural variant callers that my team was generating. And uh, I just created this web app. And so what that does is it will load a VCF file and create this table uh, with links for each row in the VCF file to a JBrowse2 instance with the tracks already populated. And so you could quickly QC uh, all of your variants, uh, structural variants in this case. And uh, in this case, we can see we clicked on this 1,200 base pair deletion, and we can see the Illumina reads uh, providing evidence for this deletion with a small coverage drop, probably heterozygous deletion. We have uh, long-range paired reads 
colored with this red arc. You can also see long read evidence for this deletion where these uh, gray gaps in the read alignment uh, are shown. Uh, interestingly, these reads are colored by haplotype. Uh, so the red is one haplotype and the blue is the other. And the, those haplotypes were called by WhatsApp. And we also have these um, actual haplotype tracks. These are called, these are the Minimap2 results loaded as an alignment. So you can see the paternal haplotype has that 1.2 KB deletion. The maternal haplotype does not have the deletion. And the same feature is in the genome in a bottle truth set, which was done on HG002. So with that, I just want to say thanks. And um, I'm going to try to do a live demo to uh, demonstrate some of this stuff as well. So if you're interested, you can hang on and I will load up my terminal to, to continue. All right, I'm going to continue with a live demo to show you how you might set up your own JBrowse2 instance uh, with some of this Synteny data for the HG002 assembly. So this is a brief overview of uh, the commands I'm going to try to execute. Um, but let's, let's start it off by going to my folder where all my data is. Um, these are a bunch of files that I was working on during the hackathon. But notably, we have the HG19 uh, as well as the maternal and paternal copies of these chromosomes. So I'm going to um, install the JBrowse CLI tool. So that's done by calling npm install at JBrowse slash CLI. And this is a Node.js tool. That's why we use npm. You can install npm if you don't have it. Um, and deprecations are expected. Uh, we'll try to fix those soon. But we have a, a, a subcommands in this JBrowse tool that help you see uh, different commands that you can do. So we're going to use this JBrowse create command to download and install the latest JBrowse 2 release. Um, I'm going to put this essentially in a folder named output folder. And now we can cd into output folder and it will show us the files that it downloaded. Um, essentially, it just downloaded a zip file from GitHub uh, that had HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, the languages JBrowse2 is written in. And we can start up a little local server uh, to see exactly what we have so far. I'm going to run the command npx serve dot. That'll run a quick HTTP server locally. I can copy that to my web browser. And it says configuration not found, but it offers you some sample data to browse. So you now have a JBrowse 2 with some tracks that you can view. I just opened up a VCF and a CRAM file. Uh, you can see uh, those sample data. We're going to load our feature or our uh, JBrowse 2 instance up with our own data now, though. Um, so I'm going to keep this HTTP server running and make a new terminal. So let's just say new window. Again, I'm going to my sort of data folder here. And I'm going to add the HG19 assembly to that folder. So I'm going to say jbrowse add assembly HG19. Currently, it's just chromosome 22. Uh, and we're going to output it to the output folder. And 
we're going to tell it to copy the FASTA file to the folder. And I'll also note, just as a, a preparation step, I have already indexed this FASTA file with SAM tools, FAIDX, HD19. So again, I did that before that previous command, but we can do it again, forced to override it. Now we can go to uh, the browser again and it gives us this welcome screen uh, instead of that error message and we now have HD19 chromosome 22 is the name of our quote unquote assembly and chromosome 22 is loaded. We don't have any tracks yet except the reference genome but if you zoom all the way in I'm holding control and scrolling in. We can uh, see all the bases. So that's your FASTA file. Now we're going to try to add some tracks as well. So we created um, some next generation sequencing alignments. Uh, we aligned some Illumina reads to the HG19 assembly. So those are uh, in a cram format. And I'm gonna again, I'm gonna use the add track command this time, the file name for my cram file, and send that to the output folder. I'm gonna copy the cram file there. And here we are. I can go back to my browser, refresh, and now I have a new track. There's my reads. Excellent. One thing that is often useful to do is load a bigwig file. And, uh, can actually create a coverage track for that for that cram file, convert it into bigwig format, starting with most depth. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna say 100, 100 base pair windows. Uh, let's see, I've called this before. So the format most depth file dot cram. 100 base pair window, the reference genome, and then the output prefix. So, then the uh, HD19 chromosome 22 is our FASTA, and then let's just give it the same file name as the prefix. Gonna chug away on that for a second. And actually this is gonna output bed graph files. So um, this outputted a uh, bed.gz file for per base and regions. So if I gnzip 2x250 hd19.cram.regions we can look at that in a text editor. And it shows us the coverage. Looks like a lot of zeros, but there we go. 60x coverage there. Um, we can convert this bed graph into bigwig with bed graph to bigwig and uh, run Run that with the bed file as input. The middle commit uh, parameter is a chrome.sizes file, which you can use a fast index as. And then the output bigwig file as the third parameter. So we'll call it bed. Let's delete the bed. Just .bw. And 
we go. So now we have a bigwig file and we can tell JBrowse to add that track. I'm gonna output it to the folder and we're gonna copy the file. There we go. So now our output folder has cram file, FASTA, and this bigwig. And indeed, here's our bigwig. And this is nice because we can view very large areas of the chromosome with the bigwig file quickly, whereas from the raw reads, that would try to load 500 megabytes of data, which is hard to do quickly. So, um, it's great that we have a couple tracks for this genome aligned to HD19, but what if we want to view HD19 versus the HD002T to T assembly? So kind of that Synteny style view. Well, uh, again, I said I've ran Minimap2, and let's try and do that again. I have this command stored in my history. Clear that. So I'll walk you through this. It says minimap2 c, that means include the cigar string, dash x asm5, that means use the assembly to assembly alignment mode, and then we're going to align the chromosome 22 maternal dot fasta against the HD19 chromosome 22.fasta. And then we're gonna output that as a PAF file, pairwise alignment format. Uh, this is a ZSH thing. So that'll take a second, but not too long. And in the end, we'll get basically a whole genome alignment, but in this case, it's just the chromosome 22 versus chromosome 22. Speeds things up for laptop analysis. Only 30 seconds, it's very fast. And now we can add this file as a track, a Synteny track. But first we need to add the maternal FASTA file as another assembly. So let's add maternal.fasta output to our new folder and we're going to copy it. You can also do same link or move, but just copy is generally easiest. Just for reference, I'm going to return to the import one. And now we have two options here two assemblies to choose from. And now we're going to add the PAF file as a Synteny track. And it will automatically detect it's a Synteny track from the file extension PAF. Now the Synteny track is associated with those two different assemblies, so we pass it the assembly names parameter is shortened to dash a and say chr22 maternal and then hg19 chr22 is the second one comma separated and we output that to the output folder and again copy it and actually i happen to know that this is switched around so when you minimap to 
this is the target and this is the query. So we're gonna actually flip the, we flip the order and pass it like this. So when it's one, two, you pass it as two, one. Now, keep browsing HG19 here. And now we have this new track. There it is. And this is a Sentiny track showing the alignment of the HG002 T to T assembly versus HG19. And these are big sort of alignment features that give us per base data about that alignment. And we can actually right click here and generate a Sentiny view right from this track. And you can see, here's this 37,000 base pair deletion. That's here on the T to T assembly too, as this blue triangle. And over here, we have this yellow. That's a, that's a large insertion as well. So you can see this is a cigar operator 24,270i. So that's a 27 kbp insertion. Pretty cool. And you could imagine, you know, you're just browsing around HG19. You have your favorite gene of interest and you want to see what that same position looks like on another genome assembly. This is a really easy way to go. Well, open up a Sentiny view right there. Great. And it gives you the same zoom level that you're at, even though this is a, you know, much larger 1 million base pair alignment, it only gives you the context that you're zoomed into, this 252 base pair window. So that was a real fly through and hopefully can help you get started on your own JBrowse 2 adventures. I was really happy to bring you guys along on it. Uh, if you have any questions, I really encourage you guys to uh, check out our website, jbrowse2, or sorry, jbrowse.org. It'll automatically take you to jbrowse.org slash jb2. And check out our contact page. We have our GitHub discussions. We have issue page. We also have a chat room. The URL is kind of hard to memorize, so just go here, uh, or our mailing list. Um, but we definitely recommend chat and GitHub generally. And uh, you can also contact me directly if you so feel like it. Uh, my name is CMD Colin on GitHub, and my email address is colin.h at gmail.com. So with that, uh, I really appreciate your guys' attention, and let me know what you think.